Guns and Chicken Strips. I'm your host James. What's happening? Today we're gonna start it off with a little bit of a light in the mood, you know. Second half of this episode, we are gonna be telling a very sad but heartfelt and informative story. That will be the continuance of Nelson the Terrier's vacuum. But right now, we are headed to the hospital where my sister was to pick up her grocery get up, me and my dad. We're gonna be meeting Mad Mike there. So sit back, enjoy his goofy old self. I can tell where I get my slightly odd personality from, I guess you could say. Does anybody else love driving minivans? Minivans are just awesome to drive. I would never want to own one, but I do want a G-Van. You know, the ones with the ladder on the back and the tire, the seats that swivel and the, the one with the mattress at the back. I just wanna pimp it out like they used to do in the 80s just make me feel awesome like one of those guys like the girl asks so what are we gonna do on our date well I'm gonna pick you up in my van and we gonna go that way whenever me and her are dating later on they can be like oh what kind of car is you drive he's got a van an awesome van not one of those creepy vans you know with no windows it's gonna be a you know like a good type of van all the windows and curtains and the uh, lay down back seat and the turnable chairs was awesome. My brother had one when we were teenagers and it was just the coolest thing ever. I remember the very first night that he got it, he came driving down the street. Me and my buddy were walking back to his house. We saw, I saw him from about 200 yards away at night because it looked like a Christmas tree. It had lights all down the running boards. It had three antennas on top huge CB antennas that were hooked up to nothing. I'm guessing they were just for looks, I don't know. And they had as running lights on the top, they had eagles, glorious eagles. That's that if you would have put red light and blue lights instead of green and Christmas tree looking lights, that van would have screamed America all over it. And one day I will have one just like it. Till that day, I'm gonna stick to good old trucks. If you're a teenager, ask your parents for a G-Van. Or if you gotta buy it with your own money like a responsible young adult, buy a G-Van. They're most likely not that expensive because they're gas guzzlers and they don't make them anymore. If they do, they're huge and insanely expensive. But back then, they were bad to the bone. They had VCRs, they had giant analog TVs. And I will insert a picture of a G-Van right now. next face you're gonna see is Mad Mike. Looks kinda like this face, but older, more tanned, and more badass. Here comes Mad Mike and the Green Goose. There's Mad Mike. See you here in a few minutes. Sorry for all you Mad Mike fans out there. He had been at the hospital all night with my sister and my niece. He just wasn't in the mood to be on camera. We're gonna let him slide for today. But next time, Mad Mike, we'll talk to the camera because the people need their Mad Mike fix. Hello, I'm Sponsor Steve. I hope you enjoyed that portion of the episode. Now I'm gonna kick it on over to James and let him explain the saga of Nelson, the terrorist vacuum. Enjoy. Just in case you haven't seen my last video, the terrorist vacuum, I'm gonna go over with you the importance of it. It's a sad, sad day here in the world of guns and chicken strips. We've lost a dear old friend. Hadn't seen him in a while. <laughs> he was a friend. All right, this is about Nelson. Nito Nelson, which I know him, Nelson. I'm Nelson. He, he was a good guy. He used to clean, clean the house, the Turkla house, the Lunkers TV house, day in, day out, no questions asked, doing it. Just doing it, keeping it clean, keeping them fresh, keeping no dog hair, no dirt. Just going around sweeping, cleaning, sweeping, cleaning all the time. Till one day he started getting a little, a little slow, sort of squealing a bit. And he just, he just was, wasn't what he used to be. He used to just destroy dirt with prejudice, suck it right up. And we empty him out, he'd go right back to, to his charger. And then right back to cleaning. But I don't know what happened, man. He just, he got old and then he was replaced. Needless to say, Nelson did not like this. So once he was replaced, he just sat in the corner, low on battery, wondering why. Why? He just did not understand why. Till one day, he was so depressed, 
he was on social media, as teenagers do, reached out to some people that said that they could help him, help him out through his hard times. And that group, sad to say, was ISIS. <laughs> they grabbed him, his little teenager moldable mind tricked him into hating everyone. They found out that he lived with a veteran and they taught him how to use a knife. Is that not messed up? That's completely messed up. I can't stand that. So they trained him how to use a knife and then put it back in his environment. We didn't notice any difference because he just, I don't know where appeared back. We just thought, you know, he was like under the couch or something, cleaning, like he loved to do. But there was something different about him since that day. He, all he did was drive around with his little terrorist flag and his blade. He couldn't help himself. He loved carrying that blade. He was just one around cutting stuff, stabbing stuff, talking about jihad this, jihad that. Oh, he's talking, I don't understand jihad, you know? I understand that it's a holy war, but he kept declaring jihads on everybody. And we didn't even do anything. Every single time somebody in the come in the house, he, jihad. We don't understand. That's what he just kept doing. Little guy was awesome and everything. It was time. It was time to put an end to the madness, the reign of terror that he had over the Turkla household. You were not able to get a good night's sleep because the door would just creak open and there'd be this little vacuum coming in with a knife threatening to stab you. I don't know what his deal was. He just kept saying Muhammad jihad. I don't even know. We got him out here. We didn't have to trick him. He understood what was going on. We got his blade, disarmed him. He came pretty pretty quietly. We set him up and he started getting a little antsy. So as you'll be able to see in the video, we had to strap him down, tie his little wheels down with some duct tape. Luckily we had his favorite duct tape, kitty cat duct tape. And that kitty cat duct tape helped him, soothed his nerves to where we were able to set him up for his execution. And he just kept screaming something about an explosive battery inside of him that we were gonna regret this but we had to do it. We had to take the chance because we just couldn't live in fear anymore. Got him strapped up, got him put where we needed, and this is what happened. <laughs> Trust me when I say we would not do this if we didn't have to. It's just, it, he was just too violent. They have a young daughter in there and he just, it was just, it was just wasn't good. He was a very, very violent object by the end of this, but he's in a better place. All right, we were finally able to catch Needle Nelson, the ISIS vacuum. And now we got him all strapped up with his loving kitty cat camo duct tape. He loves it. It keeps him calm in this time. It's a sad day, but it's time to end it. Just in case, because he did tell us something about an exploding battery that he had installed, we are going to get behind cover. Needle Nelson! Bye, Needle! <laughs> I'm kind of wondering if the uh, pressure. Oh, I just missed it. Completely? Yes, right oh. there. Did you feel pretty dumb? I feel dumb. Got too confident in my skills. That shows you, even though you're a badass, do not give up on practicing. <laughs> Bye, Nelson. Bye. <laughs> Yes, I saw that. Were you recording? Yes. All right, so Mr. Turkle just almost bought me a new camera. <laughs> <laughs> but we just, it was insane what just happened. He told us about exploding battery, but we just did not take him seriously. The emotion just hasn't quite hit me yet that he's gone. Eventually I will deal with it. But for right now, he's in a better place because he did snap. And there's literally nothing left of him we're having a hard time locating any pieces of him that is what's left of the barrel i wonder where he got that battery aftermath of, of nito the terrorist vacuum nelson the terrorist vacuum we're pretty sad you know i'm sitting here just kind of remembering all the good times if i had some 
montage footage, I would let it roll. Some Enya. I will remember you. You will remember me. This circle is obviously, obviously just hurt. We still haven't told his wife yet, but she'll be okay. She's got a new one. Well, appreciate y'all watching this, the saga of Nito Nelson, the, te the terrorist vacuum. Hope y'all have a great day and enjoyed the show, and we'll see you tomorrow. I will remember.